It's my pleasure to introduce to you our 2009 Athena Young Professional Award recipient, Wendy Akbar with Quarles and Brady. Hello, I want to thank everybody here, particularly the Athena Foundation members and its sponsors, and the Phoenix Chamber of Commerce, and of course my family, friends, and colleagues for taking the time to be here. I'm honored to be standing in front of you, in front of all of you here today especially in the company of all the inspiring, passionate women who are being honored alongside me today. I would like to take the opportunity to briefly share a little bit about the passions and motivations that brought me here. One of my favorite words has always been innovation. You cannot lead without a spark of innovation inside. You cannot mentor without being able to inspire innovation in others. And you cannot build a better community without providing it with a way to harness that quality. I moved here to Arizona from the wilds of New York City two and a half years ago. Right away, I was struck at how different and more dynamic Arizona is in so many ways. I know, dynamic as opposed to New York, right? <laughs> but it, to me, it's a matter of perception. The United States has been called a prodigal teenager always at the forefront of invention while still struggling to find its way among countries that have been around for hundreds of years longer. The way I see it, Arizona is in the same position in relation to the, to the rest of the country. We are the 48th state, the last contiguous piece of land to become part of today's United States. But we are also one of the fastest growing states. Phoenix is now the fifth largest city in the country. I look around at the other Athena finalists who have done incredible things with their lives and have contributed so much to society in Arizona, and I'm awed to be put into the same category as them. It's people like these who have made Arizona into such a mecca of innovation. But what is most inspiring to me is seeing how Arizona has embraced the future, not only attracting some of the nation's brightest and most talented individuals, but encouraging numerous technology-centric country companies to set down permanent roots here, putting Arizona on the fast track to becoming a national and perhaps a global leader in the world of technology. As an intellectual property attorney, I deal with patents, trademarks, and copyrights every day. People's inventions, their ideas, their writings, their artworks, things they're proud of that, th that make them who they are. It's why I call intellectual property the law of creativity. In my practice, I've discovered that Arizona is truly becoming a hotbed of technological innovation, from aerospace and bioscience to chemical compounds, semiconductors, and internet media, to, of all things, the science of fruit juice and mattress foam. <laughs> but there is so much being done and so much more to do to ensure that Arizona gets there. So many ways to contribute that it's like being a kid in a candy shop. And as anybody who knows me will tell you, I have a huge sweet tooth. <laughs> this passion for innovation is part of what motivates me to undertake many of the leadership, community, and mentoring activities I have. For example, I'm on the advisory board of the Arizona Science and Engineering Fair, Fair which aims to develop and support the world's top young scientists, especially those here in Arizona. When I was growing up, there was an undercurrent of understanding that science was a subject that boys excelled at. Even today, girls doubt themselves in science more. One of my goals is to help girls and young women, as well as students who may not have as many resources as others, discover that the world of biotechnology, engineering, and computer science, and for young women attorneys, the world of intellectual property litigation, which is traditionally a man's field in the past, are as open to them as it is for everyone else. I've told you that innovation is one of my favorite words, but my favorite word of all is the word can't. That's right, can't, as in cannot, will not, incapable, disbelieving, discouraging can't. And why? Because there is no fertilizer more conducive for culturing ambition and inspiration than to be told that you simply can't do something. 
either because of what others perceive to be your limitations or intelligence or lack of resources, or simply because. I was diagnosed with a severe or profound hearing loss at, at an early age. A leading audiologist told my parents, you can't send her to regular school. She won't make it past the second grade. Years later, others tried to say that I simply can't be placed in an honors program because it would be too challenging. As a high school senior in that honors program, taking classes at a local college, a, professional, a professor, a PhD from Princeton, told me that his recommendation was that I can't take his philosophy 101 class because, as he put it, there was a lot of reading involved and a lot of big words. <laughs> On the one hand, it would not have been possible for me to turn these cans into, can into cans without the many people who told me that the sky was the limit. At the same time, I often felt an acute lack of mentoring in my life. Up until college, I had never met someone who, like me, was a hearing impaired or deaf person thrust into mainstream society. There were simply no role models that I could point to and say, well, she's deaf and look at her. She succeeded in life, I can too. I see a similar trend everywhere today. Children and young adults who, whether because of economics, race, disability, ethnicity, gender, or other factors, don't have the opportunities or the mentors to help them discover that anything is possible. Much of my passion and energy is thus focused on trying to serve as a mentor for students and young professionals with hearing impairments and disabilities, and to help girls and young women discover their potential and interest in science and technology. I know all of these amazing young people have heard the word can't numerous times in their lives. What I hope to do now in the future, now and in the future with the help of our community, including the inspiring and ambitious woman being added here today, is to encourage these individuals and the Arizona community so that these bouquets of can't blossom into cans. I want to congratulate all the Athena panelists for their achievement and thank everyone again for their time and attention. I look forward to getting to know and work with many of you in the future. Thank you.